Ugh, big stretch for the kid. All right, guys, welcome to this episode of the podcast. This one, uh, camera's sliding down here. Yeah, there we go. This one's a really good podcast. I think it might be the first time I've had a podcast with somebody I've literally never spoken to before in my life, and I have no clue who this guy was going into it. His name's Henry Fitzgerald, super sick dude, uh, badass downhill mountain biker. One of my friends had mentioned to uh, see if I could get him on the podcast, and I DM'd him, and he was down, and I'm really glad we got to do this because it was uh, it was sweet to meet somebody, uh, meet some new people, and also to have like such a sick... Uh, Sick guy in the podcast and something different than skiing and snowboarding. So you guys are going to really love this one. Uh, like I said, Henry's a badass dude. Obviously, this uh, intro isn't filmed in the podcast studio because I was late for MM. Well, I was late for the podcast coming back from MMA and uh, I didn't get to do a little intro in the podcast studio. So here I am. Nice new sweater hanging out and uh, filming an intro for you guys right before I upload this video. So big thank you to uh, everybody that shared out the last episode of the podcast. If you guys want to get featured in the next episode of the podcast, just uh, take a screenshot of the podcast, share it on Instagram and tag me in it. It helps grow the podcast, uh, get it bigger and bigger so we can get more guests on, cooler guests, and just keep upping the production quality and everything and making it uh, just better overall. So I- I'm excited about that. Big shout out to Ridge Rogan Free Ski for shutting it out. BG Free Ski, Mason Ruckel. Uh, TMC Worldwide, and yeah, all the boys for sharing the podcast episode. I, I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, if you guys want to be mentioned in the next one, you know what to do. Before we dive into this podcast, I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors of the podcast, Red Bull for supporting it. I don't have a Red Bull cap yet. One day, hopefully, I would be sick. I would look damn good in it. Just, just saying. Along with that, K2 Skis, uh, man, they they're just the best. They've been hooking up huge. Like guys, if you want, if you want an unreal pair of park skis, I. I highly, highly suggest the poachers. They're my, they're my go-to. I, I've been riding them for two years now, and I don't think I would switch with anything else. And also, I got new boots this year from K2. I haven't tried them out yet, but I'm really excited to try them out. They look really sick. We'll see how they go, and I'll keep you guys updated. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Vertica outerwear for hooking it up with some nice baggy, baggy outerwear, which is muy caliente. Everybody likes baggier clothes than skinnier clothes. Well, maybe, maybe we'll do this discussion one day, tight versus baggy, but... I think we all know what the all know what the decision is. It's baggy your clothes for the win, for sure. Especially if you're in freestyle skiing. Maybe even if you're in downhill racing. So and then of course wear the others on top of that. If you guys are looking for mittens this season, like best mittens in the game, guys. Use the code uh, Bruce all caps when you check out and you guys get a little extra something sum thrown in your bag. And also they're just badass mittens. I'm gonna be rocking a pair this year. Uh, I'm really excited for them. I haven't tried them on in the winter, haven't used them in the winter, just a little disclaimer, but I have worn them around my house and I like them a lot. And then finally Finally, 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 my favorite place of all, Mount St. Louis Moonstone. Huge shout out to them and uh, huge shout out to them just for having one of the best train parks around and really just providing a spot for everybody to learn, hang out, and having a community there. So that's uh, it's awesome. They do a great job. So big shout out to all those guys. And on to the podcast with my boy Henry. Enjoy, guys. Three, two, one. All right, we are now recording on all platforms, waving my hands like an eight. Up there's recording, down here's recording the mic, sweet. Gonna give my boy Henry a ring, and then we're gonna go get it right to this podcast. I'm stoked for this one. It's gonna be an interesting one. All right, we are rolling live in a sec. This is a brand new podcast with a new face we've never seen on the podcast before. Yo, what's up, my man? Hey man, how's it going? Hey, good to good to meet you, dude. This is a uh, first time, eh? Yeah, yeah, good to meet you too. Yeah, sick to see you, buddy. Uh, so Henry, right? Yeah. Yeah, sick, yeah. man. I'm uh, I'm so happy on the podcast. I haven't had anybody from uh, downhill mountain biking or mountain biking at all, and it's kind of uh, new to see. It's nice to meet new people. I have no clue who you are, so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> no, yeah, no clue who you are whatsoever. Yeah, one of my friends. I don't know if you know him, Joel McNair. McNair. Uh, he said you'd be a sick guest for town on the podcast. He said you're from West and you ripped cool. down him out biking. I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Give this guy a ring. <laughs> see if he see if he wants to hop on. So yeah, dude, I'm stoked. Yeah, you, yeah. I'm stoked you made time to do this. So cool. Cheers. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, I, I really I really appreciate it. So what have you been up to lately, man? Like you said, you're living in Van. Yeah, yeah. So I I live in I grew up in Vancouver and yeah yeah. Right now it's kind of just my off season, like because of the pandemic and all the crazy stuff, like our racing got pushed back quite a bit. So it was all kind of in the fall. And then maybe for like uh, almost a month now, I've just been hanging out at home and getting back into training and riding at home. 
Yeah. yeah. Is there anything to ride in Van, or like you kind of got to go? Like, there's some trails and stuff, or? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sick. There's like three mountains on the North Shore that you can ride. One's super good for downhill, and the other two are good for like trail riding and stuff. If you're familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's, I, it's a super sick spot. I'm by no means any good at downhill mountain biking. I used to dirt bike a little bit. I've done like a little bit of downhill mountain biking, but I'm not good at it whatsoever. Are you coming for the podcast, Pat? All right, this is my friend Pat. He's uh, he's my co-host. He was bitching about yeah, he was bitching about having to do homework. And he wasn't gonna come join, so I was gonna do it by myself. But he's decided he's decided to come and step in. So this is how we yeah yeah we're just gonna sit down and have a little chat about mountain biking and all the mm-hmm. all the cool shit in the world. So that dude, that's sick. So when does your when does your season end then? Um. Well, usually it kind of ends in like around September October. I guess season's kind of like. April to October-ish, like, with the main part of it being, like, July and August. Yeah. But, but yeah, because of, like, the pandemic, they decided to cancel all the races during, like, the deep part of summer and push them back to the later part of the fall just to, like, I don't know, kind yeah. of figure this stuff out, right? But you guys were still able to do them in the fall? Yeah, so it was, like, a condensed season, and mm-hmm. the team I'm on actually just decided to only do, like, world champs, and then... Yeah. There was two World Cups after that, and we decided to come home because they're in Europe, and we're just like, I don't know, limit, like, yeah. I don't know, limit being away from home, right? So we just went for World Champs and then, then came back after that. Sick, yeah, it makes sense for sure. Uh, Europe's a little iffy, well, was iffy back then. So what team, yeah. are, what team are you on then? Uh, I ride for uh, Norco. Okay, do they, do they have, like, national teams at all for downhill mountain biking, or, like, Canadian team, U.S. team, or no, not like, not that kind of level yet? Like, it's just, not like, not really established like that. Exactly. Like, it just, like, since it's not an Olympic sport, like, yeah. Canada really doesn't seem to care that much. Mm-hmm. Like, for a world champs, like, you're technically registered under, like, your, your national, like, I'd be honest, registered under Canada, but, like, at the actual race, they don't give any support or anything. And okay. It's just kind of like you're running, like, the Canadian jersey for that one race, and the rest of the year you're, you're with your team or on your own or whatever. Yeah, and then... Yes. So you guys don't get any government funding or any help like that? No, no. 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 But the, does like, so you said like you're on Norco team and obviously your sponsor, do they like hook it up a bit or like for contests? Like, cause like it's gotta be expensive going to Europe and stuff. And like, especially if you don't have national teams that are helping cover that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess like, yeah, it's pretty sweet. They like, they help out a ton and bring us over there and give us support and everything over there, which is super sick. And sick. Yeah. I'm super lucky to be on that program because otherwise I, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, it's pretty expensive yeah. sport, I bet. Yeah. Bikes, yeah, so. bikes, <laughs> bikes yeah. get up there. How often do you have to get a new bike? Uh, you can pretty much run like the same like frame all year, but like you're kind of changing out like tires and stuff. Yeah, it's like, ship, ship brakes. Yeah, and a lot of it's like kind of like re-greasing bearings and pivots and stuff like that. I guess like little maintenance things, not like yeah. full replacements, but yeah. Dope, dude. You kind of like run the same bike like the whole year. Yeah. That's sick. How much does your bike cost? Like full setup? If you don't <laughs> mind, if you don't mind saying. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I, I really don't know. The bikes we're on right now, the frames are like they're still prototype frames, so they're not being sold yet. Yeah. But I think a frame would be, or a full bike would be around like eight to 10,000. So it's as much so as your dirt bike, but without a motor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey's no, got one of those. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. yeah, super, super similar to dirt bikes in that way, but yeah, just like all the parts seem like, I don't know, just like a little bit more specific and. Yeah. I don't know. So like, didn't, yeah. I went to. Uh, <laughs> Price up. Yeah. Yeah, I went downhill mountain biking. Where does Tomaj live again? Fernie. Fernie, yeah, I forgot Fernie. Yeah, I went downhill mountain biking Fernie this year, and like they even because I didn't have a bike and we rented bikes and like I was like looking around the shop and I'm like, oh my god, I can't afford a bike. I was thinking about buy one. I'm like, no, no, I, I, I can't. Performance machines. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is I, I cannot afford this. I'm gonna buy a dirt bike with a motor and walk around for that price. Yeah. That's yeah. sick, dude. <laughs> The sick thing about bikes these days is, like, you don't need a downhill bike, though, like a downhill-specific bike. Yeah. Like, enduro and trail bikes for, like, getting into it are, are so good, like, because then you can still pedal up and... Go down, down like, yeah. 
pretty like I the majority of the off season I just ride my my trail bike just because it's like so close to being scared going down and like you got some good fitness going up and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And like, yeah, for like like for the past like couple of years, bikes have been super good and like you can buy stuff used for way less than like a brand brand new downhill bike. It's but still, definitely. What are the main differences sure then about that. making a downhill bike a specific downhill bike? Like, you can't go uphill with it, or you would not want to go uphill with it. Yeah. So, like trail bikes, they nowadays they all have like dropper seat posts, which are like yeah, like you just press a button and it goes up. Have you seen those? Yeah. The one of the bike, the good. bike I used had that. It was super handy. It was, it was super nice. Yeah. Yeah. So those are super sick, and then as well they have like a big gear ratio. So like hard gears all the way up to easy mm -hmm. gears on a trail bike, whereas a down bike just like a super small cassette to like keep it light and tinier, but like there's no easy gear to pedal uphill. It's all about speed. But then as far as like geometry wise, it's like pretty similar-ish nowadays between like... Yeah. Yeah. So that's sick, dude. So you said you're from then, you pretty, you lived there your whole life, I'm guessing? Or like yeah. that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. On well, North Shore, I don't know much about it, but I used to watch biking and stuff, and North Shore was always like the place to be in BC. Yeah, yeah, yeah North Shore was like the super OG kind of spot. Like, it's where like, I don't know, like skinnies and like ladder bridges yeah. all came from, and like, yeah. there was like so much hype around that, around like the 2000s and stuff, and it's kind of like died off that like genre of riding, but like there was like a huge boom in Vancouver then. And, it's still like a pretty big scene. Is there how much the city. how much variety of trails do you have? Like is there just like an endless supply of stuff up there or do you run out relatively quickly? Pretty much, because it's just like so many people here that and like there's enough land that and the trails just like keep it. popping up or like an old trail goes out and then like comes back to life like in a few years. It's it's pretty sick scene. Yeah, yeah. That's super sick how people like help out and build trails and stuff. We always like like at home like well, I, I live in Ontario, and there's not very many hills, obviously. And, like, small town Ontario, bunch of ADHD kids with nothing to do. We'd always, like, try to build trails and stuff, and, like, people would just get decked, and then you'd come back a month later, and everything would be fucked, and you'd just, like, you know, just give up because the trail, every other time you come back to the trail, it'd just be worse than when you left it, and it's like, ah. Oh. But that's sick, man. Yeah. So how did you get into downhill mountain biking? Like, how does, did, does anybody in your family do that, or is that just something you picked up on your own? Yeah, my, my dad's just always ridden mountain bikes, and yeah, he's just kind of like grown me into being a little mountain bike kid, pretty much. Like, not my choice at all to ride, it's all, it's all his fault. <laughs> Which is pretty yeah. sick. I still get to ride with him and stuff, but yeah. He still he shreds? Shit. Yeah, he loves it. Nice, sick. Oh, that's awesome. So, do you do any snowboarding or skiing in the winter? Yeah, I actually just got some snowboard bindings today for our slipboard setup. Oh, that's uh, wicked. Nice. First time getting that, I'm pretty fucking hyped to go walk around the mountain to let that's, that's my plan for this yeah, whole don't, COVID don't get Don't get him started. He's <laughs> moving out west for the for the winter, and he won't <laughs> shut up about his touring setup. And his, He's been spending <laughs> all of his money on uh, backcountry setup this year, and I'm stuck in Ontario skiing park all year. But That's yeah. my... Yeah. Skiing's my thing, but I used to park ski until I got hurt, so now it's all... Definitely going to be, especially with COVID, I'm going to try and get it off resort as much as possible. That's so sick. Yeah. I, like, I, I snowboard, like, my whole life growing up, like, but just, like, way less than biking. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I always, I just get hurt too much and, like, park riding. I'm not even, like, actually hurt. I was just, like, get discouraged by, like, eating shit on blocks and stuff. And Dude, you take some heavy slams in yeah. the park on the board for sure. Where did you ride? Do you yeah. go Wiss or Grouse, Cypress, stuff like that? Or? When I was younger, I went to Grouse a bunch. And then, like, past few years, I've been kind of riding Seymour a bit. But, like, really haven't been riding that much. But this year, I'm, I'm pretty excited to get out a lot more than I have in the past. Nice. Yeah, that's you, exciting. In Ontario, there's not, like, Bruce said, not a lot of hills for biking, so a lot of, like, ski hills double as, like, mountain biking in the summer. Does that happen at all out in BC? Well, Wiss is pretty double. Well, other than Wiss, obviously, we know, we're well aware of Wiss, but that's about <laughs> all I'm aware of. <laughs> Dude, I didn't know, somebody told me, I was, like, in Wiss uh, last year, and somebody's like, I was like, so how b busy is in the winter? Because like, I or in the summer, because I genuinely don't You've go. You've never there. gone to Momentum. I go, I go to Momentum, but that's it. And like, I'm not there. I'm not paying attention. And like, there's a lot of bikers, but somebody told me it's like almost like twice as busy in the summer. Just 
from mountain biking. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah, I, apparently it's busier, but I, I think a lot of it to do is just like random tourists checking out like yeah. the town. So. Yeah, you, you go up but to. Definitely. You'd go up to Momentum and you'd either take Peak to Peak down or all the chairs. And if you went on Peak to Peak, there'd just be a lineup of tourists waiting for like the glass floor one. And you could get a full Gandhi just to yourself on the way down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. That's Fair sick. enough, though. Glass floor is pretty sick. Yeah, it is pretty sick. I was, I think last time I was at Wiss in the summer, I was eating, I can't remember the restaurant, what it's called, but it's like right beside the gondola on the Wiss base and like right kind of on the side of like where the Cranksworth course is and I guess where like the runs come out. And someone came like, there's this one trail that hooked right near the balcony of like where people are eating and he lost it. His bike came tomahawking right into the restaurant area. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's and I, was, I was like, man, I, I'm a t I'd be terrified to go down to a mountain bike and that was like the moment right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so good. It's sick that they have like a, a drop coming to the finish line because like yeah, yeah. I don't know, all the, everyone wants to like show up for the people in the village, right? And yeah, get all the action right there. For sure, you want to you want to put on a show. So, do you do any uh, like free, like uh, freestyle downhill mountain biking? What is it called? Um, why am I forgetting? What dirt jumping? You know that I'm not very caught up on the like. Window. What is it? What is it? Crank slope style. style? Is it slope style? Yeah, slope yeah, style on TV. Slope yeah. Style too. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't do any tricks or anything, like... But you just rip courses? Like one hand off at a time kind of thing, but, like, I, I'm really down with hitting, like, big jumps on, like, a small hard tail bike and stuff, but... That's super but sick. No, no tricks for me. Can you do, like, moto whips? Not, like, tail whip, but, like, a yeah. moto whip style things? Yeah, yeah. Some, but it's one of those things, you know, some days are better than the others. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's not your specialty. It's not your area of focus. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. tricks are... Tricks on a bike are hard. I used to BMX. That was like my summer thing when Perry sound because oh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not good. <laughs> I could do a 360. I could do a 540 and like 540 BMX bike. I, yeah, I did like two or three, and out of those ended my career. That was the highlight. But dude, it's hard, man. Like I watch. I used to be like growing up as like a kid, obviously like. I'm sure you're probably saying, but I was like huge in like the Red Bull signature series. I would watch like Life Behind Bars. Every yeah. single Life Behind Bars, Red Bull Rampage, Crankworks, all that shit. And it like it's a, it's pretty insane. And the level it's at now is like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, those guys are, and it's like probably like super similar to skiing. Like they're just yeah. so precise and stuff, you know? Like, yeah. They're gnarliest stuff, but like back to back on jumps and like in front of the biggest crowd and it's like I haven't even seen that before and this guy's doing it back to back I'm like yeah that's yeah. gnarly so fucked yeah the level of progression has gone up a lot it's gone up pretty like pretty fast in biking too eh yeah definitely cause, cause like it's only really started like 20 years ago or so right yeah so. And now you got airbags, progression bags, and and uh, foam pits you and stuff too. Bag. Yeah, they have progression bag. Well, kind of like Travis Pastrana's house. They have that progression bag, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. with the uh, um, resi kind of over bags. top of it. And you have yeah, resis yeah, and stuff now too to learn. Yeah, that's gonna help a lot. Yeah. So you're mostly just you're mostly just ripping as fast as you can. Like you're you're racing. You're doing timed races, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So and like three to five minute kind of race tracks and. Just get down to How tiring is that? Because I've done, like I said, I've done a little bit down on my bike, and by the time my hands, my arms are like vibrating. Arm, arm pump. Yeah, you get that photo, yeah, like, but I've never. How done are you? <laughs> like, because <laughs> five minutes of that going that gnarly, and like, dude, if you slip out like at all, you're cra like, because obviously up top it's like a little more exposed, but then when you get down like into the trees and stuff, like you can't really make a lot of mistakes there because you're gonna if you, if you hit a tree going that fast, it doesn't end well, does it? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I don't know, it's definitely like a super physical sport and a lot of the time in the off season like spent in the gym and like doing intervals and stuff. But yeah. like and a lot of it a lot of the gym time is like it's not just to be like stronger for going downhill, but also to like be able to take a hit if you do hit a tree or something and like not get injured, right? That's like, the I think main that's thing such a huge part of Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Like trying to stay healthy. Prolong your career, so if you do take, yeah, like like you, you said, take if you take a digger. hit, you can get up again. You're not down for a while. <laughs> if you do take a big boy. But do you get yeah. good arm, like, I, the terms like arm pump, because like, I used to raise dirt bikes when I was younger. I just kind of go to the track now, and that's my thing. But like, yeah, if I actually yeah. try and like push for like, try and like, kind of go hard, like my arm pump gets bad for, depending on the track, how like the conditions. Do you get that in downhill mountain biking too? Like forearm burn? A little stuff? bit. Yeah, probably I've, used to it now. I've been like pretty lucky. Yeah, you definitely get used yeah, you to it do. too. But like, 
I don't know. I've been pretty lucky. I find I don't really get it too much, but like there's definitely longer, steeper tracks where, I don't know, I kind of have it in my head. Like if I get to the bottom of a race run and I've got arm pump, I'm like, oh, it's because I was breaking too much. Yeah, okay. So yeah. like, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if that's a real thing, but fingers, like, or, yeah. do you have any idea yeah. of like how close you are in time when you're going down? Like you're like, do you have an idea if you're going, if you're going to be like close to a certain time, or are you just kind of guessing? And like, how many warm up runs do you get? Because I want that. That's interesting. A lot to of me. questions at once, right? Yeah, I'm throwing yeah. it at him. <laughs> Snap. No, that's good. Um, well, yeah, there's, you get a bunch of time for practice. Like usually, a race will be on a Sunday, mm-hmm. and then prior to that, like Thursday, you do a track walk. So you like walk the whole track yeah. with no bike, and then the Friday you'll have like three hours of practice yeah and then saturday maybe like an hour and a half of practice and then like a qualifying run yeah and then the sunday morning you get an hour of practice and then you're racing okay so you usually get like at least like 10 laps in before and like at least one track walk and sometimes you do a second track walk if it's like a bit more complicated of a track yeah that's so you get a good. lot of like time on it yeah, yeah that's so good. you pretty much know like if you're gonna be i don't know you know where you're at. Yeah, you're not getting thrown in the fire where you hit it. You you walk the track once and then race day you got into quality and go. Like yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah. similar to to slope style skiing in that or skiing in that aspect. What That's is uh, what is track longevity like in terms like do you get a lot of condition changes like if you're in a competition you're the last one to drop does like everything deteriorate over time I guess depending on weather and stuff would have an impact but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just super kind of dependent on weather. Like some tracks are like way more hard packed and they don't really change that much but for the most part they kind of like lines develop and especially at like a world cup race where there's like i don't know like that many more people at it going like super fast rather than like a local race where it's just kind of random dudes but yeah they usually get pretty beat up and like if it is like if it does rain during the night and you are the last one to drop and it's been sunny all day you definitely got to bit of an advantage going into that with it being dry yeah. or whatever oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome so you're talking about doing intervals and stuff and like i said i've watched a lot of downhill mountain biking just like in my spare time because it's sick yeah, yeah. and uh so how much like cardio and en- endurance actually goes into it because you guys are pedaling but for a lot of the part it is downhill like are you guys really pedaling hard or are you guys like just flat uh, spots yeah. You definitely pedal super hard in, like, the spots you pedal, but, like, yeah, like like you were saying, like, you feel the fatigue of just, like, it's, like, a whole body yeah. thing, and it's definitely, like, yeah, like, probably, like, similar to you riding motor, like, yeah. you get fucking worked, and you're breathing hard, but... You're not pedaling, so but, you, like, yeah. it's all, like, the back and forth, because I'm guessing, like, moto, the, le- the least you, s- the less you sit down, the faster you're going to be, essentially, because, like, you want to stand up, because then the bike can do what it wants, and you're not, like, hindering it. Like that's totally. that's got to be a big thing. Is if you're feeling good, you and the bike, you're you're not fighting the bike at all. It's just doing what it wants. I would be assuming that's kind of how you can tell if you're going fast. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like, and when you let off, you're letting off the brakes too. Like your suspension works so much better. And but then also letting off the brakes is kind of a funny thing because like a lot of downhill is like hitting corners good. Yeah. And sometimes like it feels like you're on the edge when you're hitting a corner because you break like super late and you kind of get loose in it but like sometimes that's not a fast way like sometimes it's faster like break a bit earlier and like hit it fast and smooth without like tighter line a little bit cleaner than just wide out around the side yeah exactly yeah Yeah, damn so i was going through your instagram because i was trying to think i've been i gotta look at this i can't i come somewhat prepared i got a little sheet of questions (laughs) just in case you steer the podcast off course and all that nonsense but um, I was looking at your Instagram, and I was like, because uh, when, like, obviously, said, like, watching Dino Mountain Bike, you see the ones through the through the, the courses, through uh, the cities and stuff, and I saw yeah. that you went to Mexico for a race. Yeah, Is that yeah. something that you guys do a lot? Because that was, looked insane. They're like, tell me tell me about that. That looks sick. Because you see all those ones of those guys ripping down stairs, like, so fast on bikes, and that's, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that was such a sick experience. That's the only one I've ever done, but... Yeah, it's like, the riding's like, it's pretty fun, and like, there's some, definitely some big jumps in that one, too, and they're just like, that much sketchier than like, any other jump, like, I don't know, those ones are like, built like, 
like the speed you had, they're like too steep for how fast you're going. So you're kind of like just absorbing the steepness of the jump rather yeah. than like actually hitting it. So it's just like the whole course down is just super sketchy. Like there's one where like the very first drop in was like you went down a little ramp and then you're on like a roof and then there's like a little alleyway underneath. Yeah. And then you jumped over some like live wires into the alleyway. And it's like shit like that the whole way. It's like That's super sketchy. Super gnarly. Throwing a little bit more of a spice, so to speak. Spice it up a little bit. <laughs> Jump exactly. some live wires, put some people there. Maybe you know, give them a little yeah. tat. That's insane because like <laughs> some of those corners are tight. Like in like some of the GoPro videos you see of them ripping down on the bikes. But like, and yeah. then you have like yeah. the wood. You have the wooden berms and everything like that. Is that like? Do you notice a big difference? Like. Obviously, you said you only rip. Would it be a lot less sort of grip on like stairs and wooden berms? I would imagine than down an actual mountain. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's like so hard packed, it is like pretty slippery stuff. Yeah, and it's just like something like you don't practice at all, or at least I don't. So no, I mean it's like a pretty funny random experience, but just just sick being down in the heat and stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine. That would be hot. Yeah, that would be a total different. Dude, the heat would the heat would get to you for sure, especially on long tracks like that. What's the longest uh, course you've ever done? Like, uh, I raced or like this year because of uh, all like the weirdness going on. Like normally, like have you heard of Crankworks yeah. before? Yeah, like normally that's in Whistler, but this year they had like a little tour with just like a group of people and they call it like the Crankwork Summer Series and they did three different uh, mountains around BC mm-hmm. and then one of the races they did it was in in Kicking Horse yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, that yeah, I yeah. ski there yeah. in the winter yeah we've, we've kind of done the tour of all the all the mountains out there sick sick so yeah they had a race in Kicking Horse and I, maybe like 10 years ago now they had like this super OG race called Psychosis and it was like this long 15 minute track and yeah we raced that and they, they brought that race back and that was a super cool race and they that yeah, that race psychosis and then there's another race they normally do in normal um crankworks years called garbanzo yeah it's another like 15 minute race and yeah those ones are fucking hard <laughs> yeah i can imagine dude that's a lot kicking horse must have been a cool one whereabouts were you on the mountain there um we well for that event it was like a week long and we did like that i guess the specific that psychosis event was actually across the valley from the ski resort okay on like the it was like a paraglide launch right at the top oh sick yeah so you like drop in from the top of there and then ride down like into the valley nice but then for the the other races there was like we also did an enduro which is like where you pedal up and you like a couple of stages and that was just all along the mountain you kind of like went up to the top and the road down and stuff and and then they had the down race that started like halfway up the, the mountain okay. that's gotta be brutal the enduros do you do a lot of enduros or not i've done like a handful of them but yeah not not too many i don't know they're yeah that, still, it's still intense don't really man. know how to do them well <laughs> yeah that's a lot of pedaling uphill yeah For Which, sure. it's funny though like that's like most of my time in the winter is just spent kind of like pedaling and riding an enduro bike, but in the winter, yeah, like where do you yeah. ride? Just riding around, just riding around the North Shore and yeah. on the mountains here, yeah. Just like it's such a like easy training tool because like for downhill, like you gotta like get shuttles organized and like yeah. Usually yeah. when I ride downhill, I want to ride like a good, like downhill, a good yeah. proper downhill track. Whereas like if I'm riding it like my enduro bike, like I'm down to just kind of ride like any trail and ride like weird stuff for work on my skills and stuff like that but for sure usually when i'm like down i'm like it's like a proper proper downhill track have you done anything other i like any other sports like you said you did a little bit of snowboarding but like it's basically just downhill mountain biking any crazy shit like uh like you're talking about paragliding or something like that or no not not really like when i was younger i, I played like basketball and hockey and all those things and i was yeah. playing a little bit of basketball recently but yeah, pretty much just just biking, and I I've been getting into running actually like nice. this last year, but yeah, that, I got into running sick, a lot. But... Like at the beginning of uh, COVID, like when I got, I got stuck at home, I was running a lot. I was going to do an ultra marathon, and then I got too busy, so I a bit sick. <laughs> I ran I ran a marathon one day, and then 
my like I was running and like I trained for like I literally I used to run like a lot of long distance when I was younger and then like I took all yeah. winter off because I was just training for skiing and it was the winter and I was doing MMA and stuff like that and I was like I don't need to run and then I got uh, into yeah. the I got into the summer COVID happened I got stuck at home I'm like I was like I'm gonna do an ultra marathon that was I was like I'm gonna do it I had like these shitty Walmart shoes that were like forty bucks. And I like yeah. did two weeks of running. I ran like a hundred, like forty k the first week, and then the second week I ran twenty, thirty, and then I ran a marathon. And then after that, my knees were like in a lot of pain. And I'm like, man, if I mess up my ski season because I'm an idiot and I just try to run like too much and I hurt myself, I'm gonna be pissed. So I kind of toned it down yeah. a lot, but it's it's good, man. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. It a lot. Yeah, I, 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 I probably wasn't as smart as you. Or like during the quarantine, like I ran one 5k with my friend and like he'd been running a lot and like i'd been like biking a lot and doing a lot of long distance rides so yeah. i felt like i had like super good fitness and he's like we're running this trail it's, it's called like the baden powell trail and it goes from like one end of north shore to the other yeah and it's like 45k and he's like we're doing this i'm like well fuck i'm not gonna not gonna say no <laughs> so i so i ended up doing that with them and it was like it was pretty fucked i definitely like I don't know, like, by the end of it, like, or, like, you kind of, like, run along the three mountains, yeah. and, like, kind of at the start of the third one, I was, like, pretty bonked and, like, just kind of dying, and, like, my friend saw me, like, running down the hill, like, he was ahead of me, and, like, my knees were just, like, turning into themselves and stuff, yeah. and I, like, just looked like a shell of a person, like, definitely <laughs> not doing any any good stuff for my body, and he gave me two Tylenol extra strengths, and... Off you By the end of that, I like, kicked in like within 20 minutes, and I was like back to full on sprinting again. <laughs> Dude, that's sick, and that's a lot of uh, that's a lot elevation of changes. yeah elevation. That's makes it a lot harder for sure, and like not not doing a lot before that. What they've been doing, or what I've heard they do for ultra marathons, a lot of people is they just uh, just eat edibles and just run, like just a little bit of edibles <laughs> and just keep going, man. Like that's they just yeah. like numb the pain a bit. Like you're like. I don't know, like 78k in, have a little <laughs> Scooby snack, and off you go. <laughs> yeah, take it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Take the yeah, rest of the run down. You guys love the, the acid, too, up there. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Some of those people are crazy. I Dude, can't dip in that. Yeah. That's why I don't live in Whistler. That's why I stay in. I've thought about going to Whistler multiple times. I've made my... Made my uh, I made my presence known and Whistler had some fun and then I'm like, yeah. I, I can't live here. <laughs> I, I, I got sucked into no. the lifestyle too easily. <laughs> do you uh do you have any bad accidents or anything in terms of downhill biking i've i've really been pretty lucky like when i was younger there was kind of like four years in a row where i i like broke my arm three times and broke a collarbone that's pretty good and those are actually all up in whistler yeah. but since then i think i think my last injury i did my collarbone when i was like 14 so it's kind of like just those few years where i was just banging them off and then yeah, I, I guess like I just kind of started getting in the gym after that, and I, yeah, I've been pretty pretty lucky to like not have any crazy bad crashes or. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You see a lot of like, do you see a lot of gnarly crashes? Is like when you're competing and stuff, and people just going over the bars into a tree or something. Yeah, like it happens it, yeah, enough. It just yeah. happens so quick, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's definitely a fair few. There was but, one. Yeah. One TV show or something I had bought on iTunes back when I was like 12 or 14 of like the OG Nitro Circuit. So it would have been like a Thrillbillies movie. I don't know if you know what Sick. that is. But there was like a 12-minute mountain bike crash scene in there. And it was some of the gnarliest bails I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like there was this one spot on the same course where five different people had the same thing. It was like you came out of the trees like a flat spot and then the course kind of took a left-hander. But there was like a rock in the middle and everyone seat bounced themselves right out the front and then just belly flopped on the flat. And there's like three or four people that did that. Jesus. Or just pe yeah. <laughs> people taking hard ones onto the rocks. Like there can't be a fun way to fall if you're whipping through like like a bunch of just like staggered stones and roots and trees. Yeah. Yeah. Like recently like the bad ones I've had is just like you just hit so hard and like you're like your body probably like wants to cry or something but the only like response you get is you just start sweating real hard oh yeah those, those <laughs> it's a you know, <laughs> like in skiing you a good one. in skiing you can usually find a bailout like if I've got the right speed for a jump and I'm doing like 
I don't know, a dub 12, let's say, and it goes wrong, yeah. I, I can usually find a way to get out of it where I'm not really going to hurt myself. You just roll to your side and land on your R- side or, or something. Or your back, or just, it depends which position you're in, there's more multiples, but like, in biking, totally. like I said, if you're in just, you're going fast, and there's lots of hard, sharp <laughs> objects, and I just don't see a way where that ends well. Yeah, fair enough, like, I guess I've never really thought about a good exit plan of crashing rather than just like not just, crashing yeah well we're gonna make that, we're gonna make cool one for you we're gonna make you a guide 101 uh, stop drop and roll we'll, we'll send it over to you <laughs> yeah that'd be amazing elbows out face in no as many cartwheels yeah. as you can it's not tom yeah uh, yeah that's gnarly dude it's super gnarly cool man well we've almost we've done like 30 minutes now so i got one question i've been asking Sick. kind of everybody uh, on the podcast, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll throw it your way. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Oh, so how old are you, man? Like, I'm 22. Okay, so you're the same age as me. Yeah. Sick, yeah, yeah. Um, it's an interesting pretty, one. Yeah, well, I mean, right now I'm living at my parents' house. Yeah, so hopefully... me too, man. I'm in the basement. <laughs> my podcast studio's in the basement. He's living in my parents' basement, renting. Sick. Yeah, we're we're on board with the lifestyle. You're not far off. I mean, I'm in the basement too right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so moved out. Mm-hmm. Still in Vancouver, and yeah, still still racing downhill bikes, downhill mountain bikes. Yeah, sick. Hopefully, well, just being better. Yeah, being better at little things. Yeah, for sure. But I think I think pretty similar. Like I'm, I've just been loving hanging out and riding and. Yeah, I want to really keep, like, I don't know, like, keep doing other things like split boarding and yeah. playing basketball, and I really want to get into surfing. I only have a wetsuit right now, but I got to get a surfboard, and then... That's not my right list there. to do. Surfing is... I was telling Bruce that the other day. I want to surf big waves. Not even remotely close to being ready, but I want to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I've done a decent amount of surfing, and big waves scare the hell out of me. I, it, is, yeah. it is intimidating, but it's fun for sure. Whereabouts in Van are you? Like, are you close to coast at all? Or? Uh, I'm on the North Shore. You are so. on the North Shore. Okay. I did. I knew. I heard you were riding there, but I was missed the first part, so I didn't know if that's where you said you were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. I've always yeah, wanted but, to go to Tofino. It looks super sick. I haven't made it out yet. Yeah, I haven't really surfed there. Like last year, I went to Bali for a month, and yeah. that was kind of like where I learned how to surf and. Yeah, so I haven't really surfed, like, here, but, yeah, I'd be pretty stoked. The only thing is there's, like, you got to take a ferry to get to the island to yeah. get surf. Yeah, so it's, like, a, a bit annoying, but, yeah. But, yeah. It's, definitely a it's still an option. Here, if you want to surf, you got to get it on the lakes, and the waves are just all over the place, and it's, like, a little bit of a oh, different yeah. animal. The Great Lakes, it's like, not tidal. Yeah. It's all wind-based, so the, like, the, the amount of timing, like... The weather has to be perfect, yeah. and usually when the waves are big enough mm-hmm. to surf, it's like midwinter and I'm super it, like, and it really sucks we had a <laughs> storm cold. we yeah. had a storm here two weekends ago last a week ago from sunday or something and we had like over a hundred kilometer an hour so right around a hundred kilometer winds at the, at the island out on the bay and it was 3.7 or 3.8 meter waves but which is like was, pretty big for but, but they were crashing every yeah. 1.4 seconds so it's, it's just yeah, yeah there's no lull in it at all for sure yeah but, fuck yeah, have you gotten out that much, like to surf in the, the lakes before? I have friends who do it. I haven't surfed. I've have not done it. No, because like I oh, work okay. a lot in the summer and I'm not usually in the area in the winter. I'm, I d- I'm too oh, cheap. Okay. I don't own a surfboard. Or a but you suit. also need like a ridiculous yeah. wetsuit you to need not a freeze to death. Because you, you need at least a six. You, you can't yeah. do it until at least this time of year. Well, a little bit earlier than this yeah. time of year, but it doesn't really pick up till. I've so. done some trips, like you said, uh, to Costa Rica and um, Hawaii, and I've done Sick. some surfing there and, and stuff like that. And like kind of wherever I get a chance to go surfing, like if I'm somewhere where they're surfing, I usually try to go, but by no means yeah. am I good at it. Like. I, I, I don't go enough. I, I would like to, but I don't go enough. Totally. It's, yeah, that, that's exactly where I'm at, too. Yeah. That's sick, <laughs> man. The idea of it is super sick, but yeah. It's a I'm lot of work. It. It's a lot of work to go surfing if you're not, like, in somewhere like Bali or Hawaii or Costa Rica or, like, Cali totally. or something like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah. For sure. Sick, dude. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up there because I know you got things to do, but that was a... Cool. That, dude, that was an awesome podcast with you, man. It was really nice meeting you. Yeah, I'm just going to pause it.